President Trump giving an eight-year-old fan who suffers from a rare brain condition a very special present for his eighth birthday because, you know, that's what the Donald does. And in return, the law... So, folks, how good was this? How great was this, folks? Look at the eyes of this young boy here. Look at him. He's... He's probably, th he's got to be thinking that he's in an absolute dream, folks. This is a young boy. His name is Liam in New York, suffering from a rare brain disorder, loves Donald Trump. The family are Trump supporters. And Donald Trump took a few minutes out of his daily schedule. This is before he attended the rally in Long Island, okay? So he's supposed to be out on stage right now. Now, he didn't have a whole chorus of photographers around him or whatever. Sure, there were some people that were there. The family, the father, as you saw in the video, he's taken a video for himself. And they asked and they said, that, no problem. And I'm, they posted, obviously, who wouldn't? If Kamala Harris had done something similar, we'd be talking about that as well. But do you think that the national media, the legacy media, is even doing any stories of this? This is the Donald Trump that nobody sees. And I really wish that they would put more of this stuff out there. But then you know what? You're going to be damned if you do, damned if you're going to say, oh, you're using him for political reasons. You're using him for political reasons or whatever. But just take a look at the eyes, folks. If this didn't bring you a little teardrop, you know, while you were watching it, man, oh man, folks. And there's a video out there it shows that he's receiving a letter addressed to him on his birthday from President Trump and Melania, wishing him a happy birthday and whatever, and he breaks down crying. And he breaks down crying, folks. Anyways, one good deed deserves another. We got so much here to talk about. The Teamsters folks have done something that's just going to be changing the landscape of the Electoral College map even more. They've refused to endorse Kamala Harris. They haven't endorsed Trump either. But a refusal to a refusal to um, endorse a Democratic candidate. Wow, folks, you've got to go back decades before you in presidential elections to see that the Teamsters Union, the National Teamsters Union, did not endorse a Democrat candidate. You know, for a presidential election. So we got a lot to talk about. Good karma just comes back, folks. It just comes back. And Donald Trump has got huge, huge, good karma on his side. Anyways, we're going to continue with that story. Let's go to this cut right now. So these are the scenes, folks, from Long Island, New York. The Coliseum. I mean, this is absolutely incredible. It has a capacity of 16,000, so they're totally full to capacity, SRO, standing room only. And there's, a nut, there's tens of thousands that are outside watching, obviously, on the Jumbotron, listening to this massive rally that he's doing in, obviously, deep blue New York. Now, do I think that Trump has a chance... Now, he said in there, oh, the legacy media, all the people on the, the, the Harris side, they're having kittens, folks. They're pushing out puppies. 
they're saying he's delusional, he's ranting, he's raving, that he's going to win New York. What do you expect him to say? Hey, I'm here in New York and Long Island, but I don't think I'm going to win here, folks, but I decided to come on up here and do this huge <laughs> rally. But you know what? We're going to lose. <laughs> come on. Now, he's firing up his base. If he can make it close, do I think that Trump has a shot in New York? Highly doubtful. But you know what? Kamala Harris should win New York. She should be like winning it by, you know, 15 to 20 points. And they're saying right now she's winning it maybe, you know, eight, nine points, pushing it. Maybe she gets 10 to 11. But if there's a shift of five to six to the right, Folks, that's absolutely incredible. Anyways, let's take a look at this and just see this crowd, folks. I mean, is Kamala drawing this kind of attention? Is she going to New York and drawing this? I don't think so. Amazing. Look at this. Look at this, folks. Something magical is happening here, gang. These are the scenes. Something magical is happening here, gang. These are the scenes from yesterday's Trump rally, if you can believe it, in Long Island, New York. As you can see, it was a capacity crowd at the Nassau Coliseum. There are reports that Trump does have internal polling that shows that New York is... So as I said before, what do you expect? New York Post puts it in, you know, he said that he's going to win New York. Of course, that's what he's going to say. And the New York Post, every other newspaper is going to run with it. Those that are favorable, you can count them probably on one finger, maybe, are going to say... Trump's doing his Trump bit, and those that are against Trump, which are in the hundreds, these newspapers, they're going to say he's a raving lunatic saying that he's going to win. How can he be president if he thinks he's going to win New York? So there you have it. But I want to get to the story that is dominating the news cycle right now, folks, and that is the Teamsters. This is somebody that the Kamala Harris campaign was courting fiercely. They wanted the Teamsters Union to back Kamala, and they haven't done so. And the Kamala campaign was getting a little bit, you know, frantic behind the scenes, a little perturbed, a little upset, wondering what's going on. But you know what? They didn't even invite the president of the Teamsters to their Democratic National Convention. They basically snubbed him. Whereas he was invited and spoke at the Republican National Convention, something that they've never done before, I believe. So what do you expect? And they did an internal poll. And folks, the numbers speak for themselves. Let's check out this story. Let's go to the next cut. So here you have the head of the Teamsters. And look, Daily Beast. Teamsters announced election move after flirting, flirting with Trump. And they say here, the powerful unions decide to sit out the 2024 presidential election, folks. This is a huge, huge blow, folks. I can't begin to tell you how huge of a, I mean, this is a punch to the gut, folks. Not just a punch, a combination, several combinations, and then a right to the jaw and then a left to the jaw, and then an uppercut, and then a left hook, and then a right jab, and a left jab, and then a couple of more solar plexes. I mean, this is absolutely, and the Harris campaign is now trying to spinning, spin this by saying that, well, there's some local Teamsters union out on the West Coast, like in California and other places that are backing us. Oh, yeah, so some local union that's got like, you know, 30 members in there, have decided to say, okay, we'll back you, Kamala. But the main Teamsters organization, the head, your, you know, your head of state and the Teamsters local, they the rank and file, they voted literally, folks, 60% back Trump. 
the numbers are absolutely incredible. They are absolutely incredible. So here's a tweet. Basically says, Teamsters, one of the largest labor unions, just released a poll showing that overwhelming majority of over 1.2 million, 1.2 million members. What's the support of Trump over Kamala Harris? Here you see it, folks. You're talking 26 points. 26 points, folks. What do you think some of those Teamsters that are doing over 1.2 million members, 60%. You know, they talk about the, oh, you know what, Taylor Swift and her Swifties. Oh, she sent three to 400,000 people to the registration site and they all got registered. Okay. Take 1.2 million, 50%. Would be 0.6, 60% would be about 700, let's say 750,000. 750,000 divided by, let's say, the, let's say if you do even divide by 10 states, all right, so that's 75,000 votes right there. And let's just say you have, out of that 75,000, let's say 15 to 20,000 decide to vote for Trump that might have voted for Biden. I mean, folks, in some of these places, you're talking Wisconsin, you're talking Michigan, Pennsylvania, there's 100,000 Teamster union members in Pennsylvania alone. And what she's talked about in the past, that she's going to get rid of fracking, and now she's changed her mind? Come on, folks. Now, I don't know if they're going to endorse this person here saying they know that they're going to endorse Trump. I don't think they're going to, you know, endorse Trump at all. But they said that uh, he talks about Sean O'Brien. He went on Face the Nation that a big chunk of his members who are lifelong Democrats are not happy that Kamala Harris, who do you think made that decision, refused to let him speak at the DNC, which is what I talked about before. So, and now you're asking them, why aren't you, I mean, they did they think they had this in the bag? Did the Kamala Harris campaign say, ah, they'll come home to us, don't worry about it. Okay, so we snubbed them. If that was a calculus somebody made there, wow, 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 I would be seriously thinking about whether or not that guy should be staying on at his job. So here I wanted to share with you, I believe the story was that they did an electronic member poll first, and from the scuttlebutt is the upper management of the Teamsters didn't really like the results of that poll or people were questioning, you know, it was electronic. And so they decided to do the phone poll. Well, here's what happened. Now, I think it was, I think it was this way. I think it was the research phone poll. So Trump's up, he's up by 27. And then they do it again, and he's like closer to 60. I mean, folks, what else do you need to see? And if that wasn't enough, all right, if that wasn't enough, we have Trump going into a Bitcoin bar where I guess you need to buy, you need to use Bitcoin to make purchases, or you can use Bitcoin to make purchases in New York City. I believe this is prior to his Long Island event. And the reporter asks him, you know, what do you think of the Teamster decision? And Trump, as only Trump can do, answers the question. So watch this. No, they were, it's a great honor. They're uh, not going to endorse the Democrats. That's a big thing. And this is the first time in, I guess, 50, 60 years that that's happened. Democrats automatically have the Teamsters. <laughs> Uh, they took a vote, and I guess I was at 60% or more, and uh, that's a great honor. I mean, it's really, I've had a lot of Teamsters work for me, a lot of the concrete trucks. They mm -hmm. built all these buildings that you see in New York City, the Teamsters, uh, exclusively Teamsters. I have to say, they've done a great job, but... I don't know who this guy is here, but he is smack dab in the his middle of history right now. <laughs> Can you imagine him? I mean, here he is. 
right next to the president of the United States. And this looks like a Secret Service agent, but look at this guy over here with his eyes. He keeps coming in to the folk. He comes in and out, checking everything out with his eyes and whatever's going on. I mean, folks, this was absolutely classic, classic, you know, Donald Trump. Themselves was very high for me and uh, the leadership, uh, Sean O'Brien and the group, who are great people, they said, we can't endorse the Democrats. So I think this is the first time in many decades that they haven't endorsed Democrats. Okay. Big, 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 big difference in those big industrial states, you think? Are they going to make a difference? I think it will, yeah, I think so. The Teamsters carry a lot of weight. Uh, the Democrats cannot believe that. And, you know, look, this is, uh, it was always automatic that Democrats get the Teamsters and uh, they said we won't. So here's Cernovich on Twitter. All of you goobers who said that Harris won the debate, wrong! Teamsters are backing Trump. I can see behind the veil. Stop falling for gimmicks, you dorks. <laughs> but this is <laughs> classic, folks, classic. It says, I'm glad Trump didn't blow it. Tonight was good. However, the narrative will be usual. Harris outperformed expectations and is a clear winner. Uh, he t goes on to say, showed her hand. Pennsylvania fracking ban haunts her. Now she says she's not going to take away your guns. We all know that's not true. There's so much stuff out there, folks. I mean, I've got a video on that basically too, where every time Kamala says, is asked a question, she says in the debate, Donald Trump, stop lying about this. Tim Wallace and I, we're gun owners. We're not trying to take away your guns. Stop lying about this. And then you hear what she wants to do with your guns, mandatory buybacks. She wants to be able to enter into your homes without due process, with, without permission, to check and see how you're keeping your guns in your home. The videos are out there, folks. It's absolutely unbelievable what this lady wants to do in terms of trampling over the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Just, and they say that Trump wants to be the dictator. Trump wants to be the fascist. All these people do is, they need to do is look in a mirror when they say those things. Because when they're doing that, they're pointing the finger at someone else. But guess what? Three fingers are pointing right back at them. Now, you know how the Kamala Harris campaign is going to spin this. You know how they're going to send their surrogates out onto the airwaves, on the alphabet networks. Right? And if you don't think this is a big thing, and you don't think the numbers mean anything... Take a look at this. As we said, 27% support, 27 points more Trump over Harris. But look, at the time, Biden still had some pull. He had that white working class, you know, good old Joe, Scranton Joe, Joe from Pennsylvania. Joe's our neighbor. He's our guy. He's a buddy we can drink a beer with, you know, 44%. Trump had 36%. So you're talking about an eight-point swing that Biden had over Trump. So you add that eight points to the 27 points now that Trump has over Harris, you're talking a 35-point shift in terms of where the members are polling. That is a 35-point shift, folks. That is seismic. That is a tsunami. That is unbelievable. I don't know how she's going to recover from this. All I can say is that this is, just, it's just that snowball against her campaign. It is rolling down the hill, gathering a bunch of snow as it's going down there. It is coming to a screeching and a crashing halt, the Kamala campaign. Anyways, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I'm your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. If you've been done so already, subscribe to the channel, like, share, and follow so you all know what to do. Take a look at our other video links above and below. My final thought is always, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.